Good evening and welcome to the Mama City Council meeting for Tuesday, December the 4th. And I'd like to call the meeting to order. And roll call, please, Phyllis. Councillor Belts? Here. Councillor Carey? Here. Councillor Johnson? Here. Councillor Sharmer? Here. Councillor Schinkel? Here. Councillor Silbernagel? Here. Mayor Milligan? Here. Will you all please rise and join me in the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That brings us to the consent calendar, and we have two items, the council meeting minutes from November 6th and the council work session minutes from November 6th. Make a motion, Stephen. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Like sign? All right, those are passed. So, this last, what, week? I guess a little over a week. Um, Mammoth had brought together the Making Spirits Bright um, program, which was to uh, bring more emphasis to what we do, our businesses around the holiday time, and it was in conjunction with the tree lighting. Um, it was really good to see how many people uh, came together for this project. Uh, it was a collaboration between uh, the City of Mammoth, Western Oregon University, the Mammoth Business Association, through the Chamber of Commerce, um, quite a few businesses, uh, Windermere Real Estate, Main Street Ice Cream, Mamers, uh Petals and Vines, Washington Federal Credit Union, the Jim Bar and Grill, Haugen's, uh Female Depot, uh, Main Street Pub and Eatery, uh, Yeasty Beastie, uh, Union 76 Station, and Fine Pickens. Uh, there were a lot of activities on uh, Saturday, November 24th, and then uh, there was particip participation in the parade with some food vendors uh, in Main Street Park the night of the 30th for the tree lighting. Um, the cooperation in this was pretty amazing. I didn't realize how far it reached until I actually got to the event on Saturday the 24th. Um, the, it was the Interact kids through the rotary were actually out helping uh, set things up and break things down and run the games. Um, so it ran the gamut of uh, a lot of different organizations within the community that put, put on this. And then I want to put a special thanks to Monmouth Power and Light employee, and I am I forget who it was, but uh, for creating this over the street um, light right here in front of City Hall. Can you? Bill Genest. Okay, so Bill Bill's responsible for that. And um, I talked with Chuck, and hopefully over the next couple of years, there'll be more items like that show up uh, for the holidays. Um, and with that, uh, I had the opportunity to introduce Mayor-elect Cease Kuntz to the mayor's breakfast, and then we've got a regional um, mayor's coalition dinner coming up a little later this month that uh, she'll be attending with me to get acquainted with mayors around the region. And with that, I'll go to uh, council reports. Uh, Councilor Betts, Belts. So I have um, two reports. The traffic safety um, commission did not meet last night. That meeting was canceled. And then the uh, library board met last week, and um, the report is that they they participated in the downtown Halloween spooktacular. Said once again, they had it was very successful. They had 825 people counted at the library, which is wonderful. Um, CCRLS will be purchasing a subscription to the Niche Academy, which is an electronic training resource. So that has both a public side and a staff side. And uh, people will be able to do all kinds of training, things like library to go, ebooks, and computer software programs. Um, the library is partnering with the Senior Center to um, connect 
each of their patrons with the services that are available. So the first offering will be an adult color your own Christmas card program at the library on December the 12th. That's a Wednesday at 11 a.m. And this is for adults of all ages and all the materials and snacks will be provided. And then lastly, we are entering the season of giving. And so the library is going to be a drop off spot for the Monmouth Police Department for their participation in the community food challenge. Um, the library is hosting the third annual Casa Giving Tree as well. And they're accepting donations of new unwrapped gifts through December 13th of this year. Thank you. That concludes my report. All right. Thanks. Councilor Johnson. Yeah, I have two. Uh, the Historic uh, uh, Commission met on uh, on the seventh, and the big the big program that they're working on, and I'm really glad to see it, is they're trying to get a couple houses to come in and try to become historic figures within our city. And they have two people that are interested in it. It's a lot of a lot of work involved in it, and I hope it continues on. Is what I hope because a lot of people on the, the commission are really excited about it, and and I think everything is pretty well set on the, the picture that's going to be put over by the amphitheater for the railroad sign that's going to go in there. I think uh, there's just a few little details and they'll be able to put that up along with Russ's help, you know, on that deal. That's pretty much the Historic Commission. On the Planning Commission, we had a representative from the state to come in and basically we'll put on a, a, a display about uh, what I want to say about how we can organize our, our rules and regulations better to help uh, people that come here to apply for for uh, to to have building permits and zone changes and stuff and that's basically what they are and I think there was a grant available or they can would come and help so that was part of it the rest of it was basically uh, going over old things trying to bring them up learning process and everything else thank you <clears throat> and Councillor Schinkel uh, the Parks and Recreation Board did not meet last month. They were uh, still waiting for an update on the Parks Master Plan, so we'll be meeting this month, uh, and we'll have an update. All right. Councillor Silvernagel. Great. Thank you. Uh, Monmouth Senior Advisory Board met on November 27th. Uh, we had a guest I guess I'll call it a speaker as well as uh, just a conversation about how uh, Western and the Senior Center can work a little closer together. Uh, Dr. Melissa Cannon was there and, and she does a lot of stuff with aging. So she was work, look, working on some stuff with some students she had as well as uh, creating more ties there with the Senior Center. Uh, I also uh, am guessing we will see a, a rental uh, changes for the facility that'll be in front of us in January. They're pretty much finished with that, it looked like. So that concludes my report. All right. Councillor Sharma. The uh, Monmouth Tree Board um, elected not to meet as a board in November. However, on the 10th of November, there was a very successful uh, tree planting event uh, to uh, commemorate uh, Veterans Day. There were about a dozen international students from uh, Western Oregon University who helped out, and there were uh, about 12 trees, shade trees, planted at uh, Madrona Park um, uh, near the playground and near the uh, front walkway which will provide some good relief in the summer when it's very hot and sunny. Um, the students then stayed afterwards to uh, help with weeding and mulching there at the Arboretum, and uh, we are very grateful to them. Thank you. Councilor Kerry. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, the uh, MyNet board met on November 29th, and, and um, I'd just like to acknowledge um, one of my, uh, you know, one of the Monmouth representatives on the MyNet board, the distinguished looking gentleman in the back with, you know, the no shave November, uh, David Ritchie <laughs> back there is a tremendous member of our, uh, uh, of that board, doesn't get a lot of recognition or face time, but, uh, but it is a valuable asset. Um, a lot of good news coming out of the MyNet uh, at the moment. Um, we've been talking, and I've been talking to you ad nauseum about this pond, conver pond conversion, which is really the, the upgrade in technology that's going to be necessary for continued service. Um, that is considerably ahead of schedule and considerably under budget. Uh, they may conclude that within you know a year in advance of the five-year 
projected time frame that that uh, I believe they had uh, anticipated. Um, and if things trend lines continue, uh, maybe as much of uh, you know beat budget by seven hundred thousand dollars. So that's a, a, a really a good um, a good deal. They've done a nice a nice job with that. Um, we're about almost 1,100 actual conversions that have been done at this point, and they've got projections out for the for the uh, the remaining time on that. Um, the managed Wi-Fi program that I've mentioned, we, that's, that's rolled out about a year ago. Uh, they've got 300 plus customers and that seems to be going fine. That's, that's additional revenue uh, for MyNet. Uh, so that's, again, uh, running a bit ahead of what they thought it might have been. The Willamette Valley Fiber Project, uh, that in Dallas, uh, that expansion over to there, I have mentioned before, and you might not have noted, but the city's been divided into 22 section sectors and so that's how they're going to attack the build out of that over there this is the the infrastructure build out and they have either well they got 15 of those 22 either where they're they're actually getting fiber in the ground uh, or they've got an engineered so they're they're on schedule um, the planning is is going as they had anticipated so um, they, they expect to have very likely um, you know someone on site in Dallas in uh, by the end of the year or certainly the first of next year for certain so and and by the way the reception has been quite good that they, they've been over there and that's been mine my sense as well as I've talked with with uh, people uh, over there uh, finally um, you know they because revenues are good expenses are being managed uh, the projections right Right now and these won't hold but but they're, they're an indicator uh, for the May debt service that my net would pay 87% of that uh, that obligation the cities would be left with 17% of that uh, that would be roughly a $90,000 uh, obligation for Monmouth which is considerably down from you know the 400s that we used to be talking about so there's a lot of good things uh, going on over there the next meeting for the my net board is going to be December 12th at noon and I believe is that going to be at the Independent City Hall? I think so. I think that's what it's going to be. It's going to be, we're going to be discussing beginning to talk about um, uh, you know, personnel and compensation issues and that sort of thing so there may be a bit of executive session there but but uh, but maybe not. But our next full meeting will be January uh, 24th uh, 2019. And if there are no questions that concludes my report. I have just a quick question. I understand and the equipment failure has been solved and everybody's back online now it's my understanding okay. yes yes okay. and that's you know we're, we're at that sort of aging time and so that's why there's some of these things being replaced and and that would reduce the incident of that I don't, I'm not sure exactly what the genesis of this was but we need to keep up with the technology both us and the equipment yes 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 and then I just uh, realized that I'd overlooked one thing in my mayor's report. Um, we had an opening in the Planning Commission. Uh, former Mayor John Oberst had applied for that, and I'm going to uh, appoint him to that position. So I'm looking for uh, the council's uh, affirmation of that. Do you need a motion? Yes. I'd move John Oberst to the... Um, uh, Planning Commission. Appointed, appointed to the Planning Commission. Okay. I'll second that. All right. That's been moved and seconded to appoint uh, John Oberst to the Planning Commission. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Thanks. And now we can move on to community announcements. Any activities? Of there's a YMCA Christmas party and auction that's taking place on Friday night out at Greenville Barn, and I believe there's still seats available last time I checked, if anybody's interested. The uh, basketball season is underway at Central High School. <clears throat> The Lady Panthers, Central Panthers, are 16 minutes into their game uh, right now, and I'm hoping they've got a comfortable margin, but I can't guarantee it because I'm not there. <laughs> Thanks for being here.
And with that, we'll turn it over to uh, City Manager's report. Scott? Yep, thank you. Yeah, a couple of things. We had our uh, town hall meeting last week, uh, sparsely attended, but had a good discussion. <laughs> kind of covered similar areas, citizen involvement, economic development, different things. So we'll just keep going with that. Uh, the City Hall volunteer hall assessment. So we get somebody out here to do those options. We got the contractor pretty much lined up. They're already looking at documents and they're going to come out first part of January and do the walkthrough, get the initial kickoff meeting. And um, so that'll be, that'll be great to get going on that. The uh, economic development assessment that I tried to do didn't go too far. We didn't have a lot of participation and, and it was all splotchy. So um, as you've noticed, you got a second notice to try again in January on that. Uh, a couple construction items. Uh, Monmouth Power and Light Headquarters coming on really well. It's still scheduled for end of January. They got that target sitting there. And then I think a miracle for many, the Carl's Jr. site is under construction. And I think we calculated that was you know, more than 30 years that it was been sitting there. So amazing. And then the uh, Southtown Apartments, which will be right next to Monmouth Power and Light, those are also under construction too. So lots of big projects going. Just a, 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 a question or, or comment, and, and I know it, this one won't happen until we have a new sort of new council in place, but I, I'd, I'd like, I would suggest that we bring this concept of the town hall back, you know, to a work session and discuss that. Yeah. Personally, I think it's a great idea, but I'm not so sure we might be better off with a very thin agenda with lots of open comment so yeah i think we've talked about that and that would probably make sense even if you kind of mapped out just some key topics you'd like to yeah. address and say you want to do whatever anyway i'd like I, I'd, yeah. i'm hoping we can yeah. continue with we that, that and maybe find a way to make it a little richer yeah, yeah. yep all right so we have a presentation from the police department chief Hello. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Uh, I'm going to bring up members of the police department. Apologize that we're going to have to kind of stand. So it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> sure. And then I'd like to invite you all your family up also to join us. <laughs> So as you can see, this year the Monmouth Police Department participated in No Shave November. That's why you see all the beards. I think they did a good job of, of uh, participation this year. And uh, just for those that don't know, uh, No Shave November is a web-based nonprofit organization devoted to growing cancer awareness and raising funds to support cancer prevention, research, and education. The concept behind No Shave November and the goal of No Shave November is to grow awareness by embracing our hair, which may include letting it grow wild and free. Participants are to donate the money that they would typically spend on shaving and grooming and donate that money to education about cancer prevention, saving lives, and to aiding those that are fighting the battle. And so uh, this was our first year that we participated. This is actually the 10th anniversary of No Shade November, the first year that we participated. And uh, we all collectively got together. We donated the money that we saved, and we added a little bit to it. And tonight, uh, we selected the Walker family. This is uh, Kellen and Ty, and their two daughters, Grace and Lucy. And we chose to donate $850 to Lucy and her battle. Mm -hmm. There you go. Next, we have a presentation by the Mid Willamette Valley uh, Council of Governments. Sure. My name is John Safestrom. I'm uh, the small business um, program manager at the Council of Governments. And uh, this is Jackie Frankie. She is a board member of the Council of Governments. And we're here to um, um, give Steve Milligan uh, an award of appreciation for being on the Council of Governments board. 
Um, who is the Council of Governments and what is the Council of Governments? The Council of Governments is an intergovernmental aid entity uh, created by the local governments of uh, Polk, Yamhill, and Marion counties, as well as the Confederated Tribes of the Grand Ronde. Uh, we facilitate intergovernmental coordination, cooperation among those regional governments in our region, and we also uh, serve as a conduit for federal funding in our region in the areas of small business lending, transportation, and economic development. Um, some of the activities that Steve's been involved with at the Council of Governments, um, and I'll just kind of give you a list of everything we, we do, but summarize it very briefly. Um, the, the Council of Governments acts as a metropolitan planning organization um, that, it, that um, that is responsible for allocating millions of do federal dollars to transit, street, pedestrian, bike, and bridge improvements. Uh, also, um, the Council of Governments is a designated economic development district that provides access to the member governments for federal economic development funds. Also, um, the Council of Governments serves on the regional solutions, the governor's regional solutions teams, and supports um, the regional solutions advisory council. Um, also, we'll go on a little bit further here. Um, the Mid Willamette Valley Area Commission on Transportation is an advisory board chartered by the Oregon Transportation Commission and advises on all aspects of transportation, including development of statewide transportation improvement program and determines how the transportation dollars are spent within our region. Um, also, this is kind of the part I'm involved in, and I could speak for quite a while on it, but I won't, is that we also administer the Small Business Loan Program, including um, we're an intermediary for the U.S. Small Business Administration, otherwise known as SBA, the Department of Agricultural Culture uh, and Rural Development, uh, the U.S. Department of um, Economic Development Administration, known as EDA, and we also provide funds through the State of Oregon's uh, business, uh, Oregon Business Development Fund. Um, additionally, uh, and I'm coming to the end of this, uh, we also uh, administer community block grant funds for housing rehabilitation and right now for the, um, the cities of Almsville, Aurora, Detroit, Gates, Jervis, Hubbard, Idana, Jefferson, Silverton, Staten, and Turner, along with Mount Angel and Woodburn and some of the unincorporated areas of Marion County. And um, the COG also is an affiliate for the uh, U.S. Census Bureau, providing um, expertise and um, assistance in the training for the next round of census. And with that, Jackie will go into d further detail about Steve. <laughs> well, I just wanted to make a couple of additional comments to what John has already mm -hmm. said. Um, COG also provides uh, training and technical assistance to member governments. Uh, we provide regionally informed and land use, informed land use planning services to 21 cities in the area. And among the services we provide our members is executive level recruitments, background check services, executive level evaluations, goal setting, facilitation, charter revisions, customized training and new counselor orientation. And I must say, we do a lot of this partly because we have a new executive director, Sean O'Day. If you have not met him, he is exceptional, well experienced, a lot of energy, and is really pr bringing more services to the COG that we want to offer um, to the jurisdictions. Um, the COG exists because we have a creative uh, an efficient and intelligent board of directors and that's why we're here today is to really recognize one of the board members that has served on COG and all of the things that John talked about and mentioned that we do is partly because of the involvement and the, the support and leadership from the board of directors and Steve Milligan has been one of the COG board of directors for since 2015 I was almost going to say 15 years but it's since <laughs> 2015 2015, um, and we are really pleased to be here today to thank him for his leadership and his service um, to the COG. He also served on our partnership board, which helps allocate federal economic dollars to the region, and he did that since 2015 as well. And with a very, gen you probably know this, with a gentle approach and a kind demeanor, Steve has been a strong and reasonable voice for Polk County. 
We wish to honor Steve for his years of service to the COG and to the region with just a small token of appreciation. All right, thanks. Thanks. It's been a, an honor and pleasure to, to be on that board. Um, how many members do we have on that board? Like 30 people? Because we're from all the different cities around Polk, Marion, and Yamhill counties. And then a couple other, Schmeckata, Salem Kaiser School District. So it's quite a diverse board and uh, really fun to work on. Um, let's see. So next, years of service. Presentation. That's a fun part. That's why everyone's here tonight, right? <laughs> <laughs> Recognize their co-workers and their family members that have made a huge contribution to the city. So we're going most years to least years, correct? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> so first, Yolanda. Come on. Congratulations. This is in recognition of 30 years of service. Thank you. Uh, Yolanda began working for, working as a records clerk for Monmouth Police Department on August 18th, 1988. At that time, the police department was located in City Hall. Yolanda was the only employee with access to a computer in the police department at the time. She spent many hours typing reports that officers uh, would dictate the previous day. The day-to-day -day operations have changed greatly over the years, mostly due to rapidly changing computer technology. Yolanda has provided the record, was promoted to record supervisor um, in 2000, overseeing one full-time and one part-time employee in addition to her record duties. In 2009, she took on even more duties and began serving as the department's evidence technician. She quickly reorganized the evidence room and made the evidence process much more efficient. Yolanda completed 28 years of service for the city in 2016 and attempted to retire. <laughs> we quickly talked her out of it, however, and convinced her to remain employed on a part-time basis to serve as the part-time evidence technician. Uh, let's see, what is it? She did give up the records piece. <laughs> Yolanda has always taken pride in her job and is a perfectionist when it comes to accuracy. She has been organ. She has. Let's see. I don't know how to read the sentence. Uh, she has been recognized many times over the years during audits for her accuracy. She is well liked by all employees and the citizens she serves. She is always willing to help anyone with a question. Thank you, Yolanda, for your dedication and commitment to the city of Monmouth. We appreciate your 30 years of service and wish you the best as you continue to serve our community. Is it okay if we capture a photo with the award? Sure. Okay. My apologies. But I can't go home without a picture. Okay. You know what Tom will say. <laughs> That's right. Okay, okay. Now we can get a couple. Okay. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Is that man working okay? <clears throat> All right. So, our next award is for Jana Stockner. 
And this is in recognition of 25 years of service. Thank you. Congratulations. So way back in August of 1993, Jana was hired by the City of Monmouth as an accounting clerk in the Finance Department. She was sub subsequently promoted to uh, account technician and is the most senior member of our finance staff, having now been here for over 25 years. The only thing that... I, sh I should have read these before I... Because <laughs> I'm not sure what the next part of the sentence is going to be. <laughs> The only thing that outdates her in City Hall, besides the building, is the carpet. <laughs> because of her experience, she is a great resource for historical information and knowledge. Jana's customer service is exemplary, and many in the community know her and ask to see her when paying their bills monthly. Um, Jana's focus from the finance operations standpoint includes accounts payable, utility billing, cash receipts, and accounts receivable. She also assists with the annual audit. A conservative estimate is that Jana has possessed, has processed around 36,000 checks to vendors and assisted in 1.5 million billing and payments on utility accounts in her 25 years in the city. That's a lot. <laughs> Personal interests for Jana include time with her family, walking, home renovations, crafts, and most of all, her six grandchildren. The, the latest one just being under a year old now. Jana continues to be a great asset to the city, and her contribution is highly appreciated by the city customers and city employees alike. is Terry Alvarez. Hi, Terry. Hi. And this is in recognition for 15 years of service. So Terry Alvarez started at the library as a library assistant one on September 18th, 2003. She was promoted to circulation supervisor in 2010, a role in which she excelled. Terry is a friendly face for patrons during the mornings at the circulation desk. She listens to patrons' recommendations for books, movies, <coughs> and offers her own suggestions in return. Terry's forthright, firm, but friendly nature is a great asset in dealing with patrons' problems and problem patrons. <laughs> Hopefully more patron problems than there are problem patrons. In addition to her circulation and supervisory duties, Terry creates book displays to promote authors and different subjects. She continually seeks to streamline methods and procedures. She recruits, hires, and trains the library's student workers from Wu, and she has been instrumental in training new staff over the past couple years. Terry is the current chair of the city's safety committee. She is willing to take on new challenges and is always looking at ways to better serve our patrons. Whether she is checking out books, troubleshooting with staff, working to resolve a patron issue, or dealing with an unhappy <coughs> patron, Terry is always cheerful and respectful. The library is fortunate to have Terry as in a leadership role and we appreciate her dedication and all the years of service. Yeah. All right. Our next honoree is the Honorable Judge McCann. This is 15 years of service. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. Thanks for all you do for us. Thank you. Judge McCann was formally hired as the city's municipal judge in January of 2003 after functioning as the judge pro tem for a brief period prior to that. 
the four days per week that he is not with us, he is in his 25th year as an attorney in his private practice in the Salem area, where he now primarily does legal work in the area of youth delinquency and dependencies related to Oregon Department of Human Services cases. This work promotes a unique perspective for Judge McCann in this courtroom. He is an empathetic listener who takes time to understand and provide instructions. He also, so defendants feel heard and know that what has occurred and why. He has an easygoing disposition, yet he maintains control in the courtroom. He is regarded for his fair and balanced approach to each case, and it's not uncommon for him to extend a genuine handshake of complimentary praise to defendants who complete all required conditions. One particular area that has shown significant progress in recent years under Judge McCann's direction, and of which he is especially proud, is the Mental Health Court Program, which has produced excellent results for the community. The judge has uh, stated that he appreciates very much the tremendous working relationship he has with the Monmouth Police Department and the amazing support he receives from the city's um, court clerk, Wendy. Personal interests for the Judge McCann are primarily outdoor activities. He loves to ride his Harley Davidson on long trips. In 2013, he did a coast to coast cross country trip and has even driven up to Canada, including a south to north trip to Vancouver Island. Uh, he has another motorbike for dirt bike riding uh, with his gang of guys and has enjoyed fly fishing with the same group of friends every spring since 1996. Uh, Judge McCann, you must have been young man. <laughs> <laughs> Judge McCann has done and continues to do a great job. The city is fortunate to have him as our municipal judge. Just so you guys notice, this is uh, a Christmas ornament with uh, Santa on a Harley. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, next, Alan McLean. And this is for 15 years of service. For 15 years, Alan has brought to the city a diverse background of skills, talents that continue to be a real benefit to the Public Works Department. He specializes in what could be termed farm physics, the ability to analyze the situation and fabricate the tool or part necessary to get the job done. His uh, welding or fabrication skills are often used by the department to keep equipment in the field and out of the repair shop. Alan is a leader, a dependable, hardworking, no-nonsense, get-the-job-done leader. Members of the Public Works Department often lean on Alan's experience when troubleshooting or planning for work projects. His commitment to making Monmouth a better place to live makes Alan a true asset to the city and our department. We're hoping for many more years with Alan as on the Public Works team. Thank you. Thank you. We're getting there. Mm -hmm. And next is Debbie Kunkel with the Bomb Police Department. And this is for 10 years of service. Congratulations. Um, just so you so you know, my wife works for Salem Police Department in records, so I get a earful of what records has to go through. So, no, they, you do a lot. So, uh, Debbie began work as a part-time records clerk for the Monmouth Police Department on September 10th, 2008. Just shy of two years later, on June in June of 2010, she began working full-time 
as a police records clerk. She served in the capacity until September 2016 when she was promoted to her current position as police records supervisor. Debbie's ability to multitask, her excellent memory, and her dedication to accuracy make her an outstanding asset to the police department. She performs numerous functions every day, including answering the phone, greeting the public in front of the counter, at the front counter, transferring calls to officers, completing the paper, proper data entry on all police reports, distributing reports to various courts and outside agencies, filing reports, entering citations, conducting records checks, entering warrants, and purging records. These job duties are just an example of some of, the, some of what Debbie may work on during a typical day. Debbie is very pleasant and well-liked by her coworkers and the public. She does a great job making sure the day-to-day -day operations in the records department are running smoothly. Debbie, thank you for your dedication and commitment to the City of Monmouth. We appreciate your 10 years of service and wish you the best as you continue to serve the community. And 10 years is usually a jacket or a sweater. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. And next is uh, Carrie Kasperg. Did I pronounce that right? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no one ever does. I knew I was going to. I knew I was going to buy. I've heard it, your name several times, but yeah. So you want to pronounce it for us? So Kasperic. Kasperic. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sorry for that. No problem. It's phonetically correct the way you said it. And uh, this is for five years of service. <coughs> As a youth services librarian, uh, Carrie deals with any and everything child related at the library, from collection management to programming. For kids from birth through high school, Carrie is on it. She orders and then catalogs materials for the juvenile and youth adult collections. She deselects materials to maintain a useful, relevant, and interesting collection. She plans, promotes, prepares, and produces all youth programming. She provides outreach services promoting the library and the importance of every literacy, of early literacy. I could have used some of that. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie continues to create and and building relationships and partnerships with local and regional groups. Harry provides high quality, relevant, and fun programming for our local children. A couple of years ago, she had an idea about partnering with the Central High School um, team to get teams involved in summer reading. Uh, from that, the CHS Student Athletic Athlete Ambassador Program started. Several athletic teams volunteered throughout the summer to help out at various summer reading programs. The result of the first year was phenomenal. Approximately 120 CHS student athletes, ambassadors, helped out. It has, it was great for the youth, for the younger kids to hang out with the older kids. It was also very positive for the teens to help with the little kids. In addition to her regular duties, Carrie has taken on the bolt of working at the NASA at my library five-year grant program, providing quality feedback to the project's creators, uh, excellent STEM-related programming to local children, and has attended webinar webinars learning about STEM opportunities, as well as sharing STEM programming she has done. Recently, Carrie was selected as the Association for Library Service to Children a committee of the American Library Association to be a mentor. Carrie has been paired up with an early career youth services librarian to provide feedback, support, and resources. A great honor for her. Carrie has valued, is a valued member of the library team and to the little kids in our community, she's a rock star. Oh. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very much. <laughs> 
like that just for just a little bit. Yeah. And Marty Warner. Huh? He's not here. This is five years of recognition. Uh, Marty came to work for the city of Monmouth in December of 2013. Uh, he was hired as the public works operations manager. In December 2017, Marty moved into the project coordinator position for the department. In this position, Marty oversees capital improvement projects and new construction. Marty has his engineering degree and is also certified as a water and wastewater operator in the state of Oregon. Marty has raised eight wonderful children and has 10 grandchildren and counting. Uh, Monmouth Public Works appreciates the hard work that Marty has given to the community over the past five years. And he All right. Do what you got to look forward to, Cease. <laughs> Next year, there's only two. <laughs> really? Yeah. These are the. This is the best part, though, is getting to recognize the employees. Because so many of the times they're hardworking and we don't get to see their faces on a regular basis. Well, I mean, okay, they, they will. They know. Yeah. Stay here for the first rodeo. Yeah, that's true. All right. So back to business. At this time, um, we're going to do citizen comments. It is reserved for citizens to comment on items that are not on the agenda. A maximum of three minutes per item, please. Is there anyone who'd wish to address the council at this time? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to the business agenda. And this is a budget resolution transfer. And I believe this is for um, finance director Schnard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and huh? Council Members. Back it up. <laughs> um, so you have before you a memo that outlines, um, as I've pointed out at the last uh, several meetings, um, now uh, the auditors are asking that when we become aware of a situation where we will exceed appropriations, that we not wait till the end of the year, we bring it forward um, as quickly as we can as it happens. And so we had uh, two situations um, for um, s system development charge refunds, um, which don't happen very often. So we we have, we have um, adopted appropriations that are a sort of a nominal level of $1,000 in anticipation that we won't have refunds. Typically what happens is if you have a large project near the end of the year, then that can cause a situation where um, a recalculation uh, comes into play and then the developer gets a refund and that's what happened this time. Um, so what we're asking for is we don't anticipate another one like this. Our, uh, we had two large projects already this year that we uh, the South Town Apartments that you know about and Carl's Jr. that we uh, don't anticipate having refunds on those but we wanted to have a buffer so we don't have to come back to you necessarily again um, right away or until the end of the year if that should occur again and we do have some capacity in our capital outlay uh, because we will not be accomplishing all the projects that we had initially thought we would so uh, we're asking for uh, $10,000 in the sewer SDC fund and the water SDC fund to be transferred uh, from capital appropriations um, to cover uh, the expenditures which have already been made. And I'll, with that, I'll welcome any questions. And this would be resolution number 1876. So we had those those uh, refunds in both of those areas. Is that correct? Correct. Those two uh, those SDC funds exactly. Same project. Same project. Same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Byron. 
Is this something that happens frequently? Do we need to look at that thousand dollar number and maybe make an adjustment there? That, that That's exactly what I've done with this. It doesn't happen frequently and we don't anticipate it happening again. But what I'd like to do in future years, you'll remember that for the operating funds, we went to a departmental appropriation level and uh, for situations like this where it uh, goes between um, two different categories. For the SDC funds, I left them at the category level um, with the plan of talking to the local budget law folks about the possibility of budgeting that at the department level as well. And that is my plan for 1920 now that I know that it can be done. Um, and so I don't anticipate, yeah, in 1920 I'm going to uh, work with Russ to determine what a good amount is for the entire fund by as of the Public Works Department and not try and um, guess a thousand dollars and then be wrong. <laughs> This has already been paid, you said. Correct. So yeah. It's just a catch up. It is a catch up, um, and and uh, normally we will try to come to you before we're actually catching up because um, the problem was that the timing of this was such that we had to pay the developer, and the next meeting was now. So. <laughs> Any other questions? So again, this is resolution uh, eighteen seventy six, a resolution. Approving a transfer for the budget year 2018 2019 and directing the finance director to make appropriate entries. Do I have a motion? Is that a, is that a um, uh, appropriate motion right there to say, you know, as you said? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> so moved. We're, we're so moved. moved. Yeah. yeah. That's the better, that's the better term. term. Yeah. So it's been moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone, anyone opposed? Roll call. Hearing none. Oh, oh yeah, you, you think that we want to roll call. Roll, 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 roll call. Oh, sorry, roll call. Mm -hmm. Councillor Silbernagel. Aye. Councillor Belts. Aye. Councillor Schinkel. Yes. Councillor Sharmer. Yes. Councillor Johnson. Yes. Councillor Carey. Aye. Thanks. <laughs> All right, so now we'll move on to the second item, and this is a canvas of the votes from the November election, and I believe this is Recorder Bowman's. Mayor and Council, an election was held on November 6, 2018. The ballot contained candidates for mayor and three council positions. Monmouth City Charter requires the canvas be read into the record. The vote canvas is as followed. For mayor of City of Monmouth, Cecilia Kuntz, 1,925 votes. Kevin Chambers, 1,206. Cecilia Kuntz is elected as mayor for a two-year term. For City Councilor, City of Monmouth, Roxanne Belts received 1,772 votes. Chris Lopez, 1,354. John Carey, 1,350. Stephen Howard, 1,345. Steve Milligan, 1,189. And Royal Johnson, 936. Roxanne Belts, Chris Lopez, and John Carey are elected to four-year terms as City Councilors. And that concludes my report. All right, thank you. And that brings us to councillor comments. Any I, yeah, I have um, just a, a concern. I had mentioned at a, at a previous meeting that um, I would like to see us establish some sort of a protocol or policy for dealing with um, members of the public who write to us. Um, and over the last uh, week or two, we've received, um, as counselors, emails from people that require uh, clicking on a link inside the email, and that made me very nervous. And uh, um, so I would like to add that to um, our discussion about how we respond to communication from the public. Okay. And who... Can you say who that person was that sent one with links? Uh, I think there were three. Um, one was about emergency preparedness. Another was something called, um, the, the sender was somebody named Missing the Ocean. And then there was another one from someone named Stephanie Volan. And, um, and I think we've had an issue in the past where someone sent some sort of 
link and it went through the entire um, Polk County um, going into everybody's email addresses and sending them spam that sort of thing so um, I think it would be a good idea to, to <coughs> have some sort of way of uh, responding to those emails okay so I think it might be appropriate then to add some sort of um, IT training for council as far as um, we get that at my office all the time. What do you click on? What do you not click on? Um, it would probably be appropriate for us to add that into our, our training. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't bring it up earlier. It was unmanaged because we had all these people here from you. Uh, you said that in one of the emails you sent out to us was that you, the committee approved the architectural rough design, you know, the company to pick from. Who was the committee? It was staff. Just staff only. They representatives of the so, city hall complex. So if you if you pick this person, are they the architect for the program then, or, or is that just No, no, just for this phase. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Um, I'd just like to thank Royal and Steve for all their service with the city. It's been a pleasure working with you. And uh, I look forward to working with you on different projects. And Steve's done a, a pretty good job despite this is not an easy group to uh, <laughs> to lead sometimes. And so just appreciate your service and, and Royal service. Thank you. And I hope to be able to help the city serve on some other committees down the road. Did you have some suggestions? Uh, I, I would echo um, uh, Byron's comments on both Royal and, and Steve. And Steve, very nice recognition. I'm glad they came and, and recognized uh, the Council of Governments. Um, that, that was nice and appropriate. Uh, I would echo your comments on uh, making uh, spirits bright. I thought that was a good event for the first time. I think uh, uh, now that they've proven that it can work, then I think that it'll it'll expand and be better. Um, you know, in, in future years, I thought that was um, was a real nice uh, real nice start and a nice. Um, collaboration with all of the groups, you know, the Monmouth Business Association, the, the university, the city, the, you know, and then all the sponsors was good. So it was a good, good deal all the way around. Good start. Mm -hmm. There actually were at least one or maybe two church groups that were also involved in that as well. So it was a really cross the community uh, collaboration. Um, I don't think if there's anything else that I, that I had in my had in my mayor's report that I forgot to mention. But while we're here, I'll, I'll uh, I, I will acknowledge uh, Marilyn Morton, Independent City Council member. I we appreciate her coming here for training. Cross <laughs> pollination. <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> All right, with that, uh, I'm going to read the script for us to go into executive session. Um, after I read that, we'll recess the regular meeting to go to the work session. When we're finished with the work session and adjourn that, we'll come back to regular session, of which we'll do the executive session. So if I say members of the audience need to leave the room, that's not now, that'll be after our work session. So, uh, the script to announce the start of executive session, December 4th, 2018. The City Council will now meet in executive session for the purpose of discussing performance evaluation of public officers and employees. The executive session is held pursuant to ORS 192.6602I, performance evaluation of public officers and employees, which allows the Council to meet in executive session. Designated staff shall be allowed to attend the executive session all other members of the audience are asked to leave the room. No decision may be made in the executive session. At the end of the executive session, we will return to open session and welcome the audience back into the room. It is not anticipated that action will be taken this evening after returning from executive session. So with that... Can I'm I make a comment? Oh, yes. I just wanted to acknowledge that this is Levi's last night as being our oh. video. Okay. We'll have a new hey. one starting in January. I think he's done a great job. Yeah, thank, thank you thank for you. being here. Thank you for your work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, I'm looking for uh, a motion to recess the regular meeting to uh, go into work session. So moved. 
Second. It's been moved and seconded to uh, recess and go into work session. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And anyone opposed? All right. We can go into the to the back table for uh, work session. Again.